and welcome back guys and gals um we are here doing my mega art supply tour part one yeah let's dive right into it part one is all about pencils and erasers and what do i use and um you know i get questions from time to time on what art supplies i use and I'm basically going to be showcasing everything that I have because everything I have gets used from, you know, at one point or another. I guess we'll start off with erasers. The erasers I generally use are the Tombow mono erasers. Really love these erasers. In my opinion, these are the best plastic erasers you can get. Um... I have packs of them. I mean, I have new ones waiting to go. I have another pack of the this size here. They're gentle on the paper and they just erase extremely well. The next are the uh, I think these are Pentel Ein uh, polymer erasers. These work extremely well. I have this one here and this one here. There's not too much of a uh, difference between the two other than that this is uh, this is a little bit lighter on the paper and uh, in my opinion, erases a little bit better than this one. This is my preferred one, the blue one. I have some other ones. Um, I, this Faber-Castell uh, dust-free eraser I don't like it smudges more than the erases in my opinion the sakura foam erasers work pretty well and then i have another tombo mono this is one of their uh like light touch aaron style erasers and then other than that i use a kneaded rubber eraser i use this more for sketching uh, just for lightening pencils when refining a sketch. Otherwise, typically my monos are, you know, this is this is what I use to actually erase. And uh, definitely like when inking, this is what I use to like clear pencils. So then I have my click erasers, the smaller erasers. Uh, these three here are all Tombow mono erasers in various sizes. The refills are fairly cheap and it worked great. And then I have one of the Stedler ones. Um, doesn't work as well as the Monos, but it's a bigger size. So for like medium size erasing, this is what I use. I also have a uh, eraser template. It's a very thin piece of metal that allows you to lay it on a piece of paper and erase only that selected area. So, you know, you would, you would lay it down and you can use whatever hole you need just to erase that one particular area, which is helpful when you're doing some pencil work and you really need to get into a tight spot and, uh, you know, you don't have the luxury of using these. All right. So now on to the pencils, as you can see. I have a, a variety of pencils here, um, but as you'll see that most of them really aren't of the mechanical variety. I only typically use mechanical pencils for detail work or like small panels and stuff like that. The majority of the pencils I use uh, for sketching are just the regular Dixon Ticonderoga yellow pencils that you would get for you know school. I normally buy these when it's like back to school time and you can get packs of them pretty cheap. I have a huge box of these and it's what I use, you know, just regular number two HB pencil for general sketching. Then I have some Tombow uh, mono pencils and H and 2B. I don't really use those too, too much. My preferred pencil is this here, which is the Mitsubishi Uni and High Uni pencils. There's not too much difference, honestly, between the two of them. The wood is a better grade in the high uni, so it sharpens cleaner. And the end cap is a little bit different. It's got a rounded end cap. 
before it hits the hexagonal part, which makes it fit a little bit better in uh, like pencil extenders, which is what I have here. So this is the pencil extender I use. So on hexagonal pencils, it can be super, super tight, especially once lacquers. You see this doesn't really fit. However, with the rounded end cap, it fits in right up to there and allows it to lock in. So you can use them with the uh, pencil extenders. My, my preferred pencil out of all of them are the high uni. The, the regular unis are cheaper. And the, the trick to this is when it gets low, you just take it to some sandpaper and round this out and it'll fit inside the, uh, the pencil extender with no problem. But I use uh, HB, B, and 2B in that. I use harder lead a lot when sketching. Typically I, I use H, 2H, 4H when sketching. And then when I transfer over to like my actual board, then I'll use uh, 2B just because it lets me get a, a darker line without gouging the paper. But when I'm sketching, I typically just use regular, you know, 11 by 17 printer paper to, for doing layouts. For non-photo blue, I have a couple different options. I use the Prismacolor Cold Erase. I typically use the light blue, not the copy not non-photo blue. This is super, super light. And in order to actually see it on the page, you really have to lay it down and, and gouge the paper. This is a much better shade. And we'll kind of go through all these at the end. Um, the other thing I use is non-photo blue lead and two millimeter and 0 0.7 millimeter. So the lead I use, this is my non-photo blue uh, mechanical pencil, and I use the Pilot Neox Soft Blue, which actually shows it, it's, it's a good lead. And then the other thing that I use, uh, which I actually don't have loaded right now, is uh, Prismacolor Turquoise uh, non-photo blue, which is actually what it, I don't know, it's not going to, I don't know if it focused on there, but it's actually non-photo blue pencil leads. And I have an HB lead stuck in there for no, no particular reason. So for mechanical pencils, what I use are Pentel Graph Gear and Rotring pencils. I have 0 0.7. Both of my Rotrings are 0, uh, 0 0.7. So I have the non-photo blue and then I have a 2B. And then my Graph Gears are all uh, HB. So this is a 0 0.3 graph gear, uh, 500, and a 0 0.5, and it's got HB lead in it as well. Um, I have a 0 0.4 as well, but I'm using it for work, and also use HB lead in that. So the leads that I use, like I said before, I use the Pilot uh, Neox, and then I use uh, a lot of the Pentel Ein the Einstein <laughs> lead for the 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. For 0 0.5 and 0 0.7, my HB and 2B, I use the Uni. Uh, Pentel and, and Uni make the, the best uh, leads, in my opinion. Though they are a little bit softer, so the HB is actually closer to a B. And the 2B is actually even softer. And then I use 2 millimeter lead holders a lot. So what I have here is this is a 4H Mitsubishi Uni holder. Uh, it actually says 4H on there, and that is indeed what I use. This is a, a Stedler Mars 2 millimeter lead holder, and I use the Stedler HB lead. It works good enough for me. It's easy to get. And then this is a Koinor. Um, I use a lot of Koinor stuff. When we do the segment on my pens, you'll see that I use a lot of their uh, pens and pen accessories. But this is uh, a 2H lead. And then this is, I forgot the brand of lead holder that this is, but this is a 2B. And so the leads I'm using there, uh, like I showed you, uh, the Stedler. And drop everything. Stedler for HB, uh, Uni Field, 2H, Uni 4H, and Uni 2B, all in two millimeter. Which brings us to our last part of this video, which is sharpeners. 
So I use a couple different sharpeners. I use the Coom pencil sharpeners for my wooden pencils. This is the automatic, um, which gives a very nice point. In fact, uh, that's what I sharpened these pencils with. So you can see it gives a very nice long sharp point. And the way that it sharpens is it actually sharpens the wood down and exposes a piece of lead like that. And then the second hole sharpens the lead. And then I use, and this is more for when I travel. Then I have the Coom Masterpiece, which is the same process. It does the wood and then the lead. But the difference is this part slides off. So I can actually choose how far I expose the lead. So for example, this particular pencil was sharpened with the Coom Masterpiece and I, I exposed a little bit more lead. So as you can see, it will go in and I can continue to sharpen it. And then you stick it in here and then sharpen the lead. So that's what I use on all my, all my wooden pencils. With the blue piece on, it works identical to this. But the nice thing about this is it does have a lead pointer for like 3.2 and two millimeter leads on there as well. So I use this for pointing my lead. The other thing I also use for pointing my lead is this little uni lead pointer. It points very well. Um, similar point to this. I actually think the uni points a little bit better. Then the last thing that I use is a sandpaper stick. I use this for various purposes. Typically what I use, I will typically uh, cut back the wood uh, on my sketch pencils to expose as much lead as possible for shading techniques. And then what you do is you just run this on the sandpaper at a very uh, like oblique angle and rotate it as you're you know, sanding it down and it allows you to get an extremely, extremely, extremely fine point. As you can see there with a, a large taper, that's really helpful for, for shading techniques. But the other thing I also use a uh, sandpaper stick for is when you're using mechanical pencils, you'll notice like on a 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 leads. So we'll do uh, a little demo on the 0 0.7. Now this is fresh lead that's in here. So you can get really fine line, but as you're sketching, you'll see that the line becomes dull and then you have to rotate, you know, it's, it's good draftsmanship to rotate the lead as you draw. But if you really need to get a really fine point or you want to do some shading, you take the lead to the sandpaper, run it on there real quick, and then you can end up with a very fine like chisel edge or a more flat section for doing shading. That's typically, I mean, you can just take it on a piece of paper and just run the lead like that and get the same results. But that's the 2B lead there and 0 0.7. So that's, that's what I use the, the sandpaper for here. And then I'll use the sandpaper the, on, on the lead holders as well. Um, about the lead holders, there's two different mechanisms that work. Um, some are in, like uh, interval and some are free clutch. So this is a free clutch. So once I push it in, the lead will just drop straight out. Um, another example is on the Stedler. It's also a free clutch pencil. It's not an advanced clutch. But these are advanced clutch, so what that means is it will function more like a regular mechanical pencil. Each time I click it, it advances the lead. Like that. So there's two different types. Know what type that you're getting uh, when you buy the lead holders, you know. That way you're not shocked by the operation of it, or at least know that the two different types exist. Beyond that, I'll kind of show the, the pencils in action here. Start off with the non-photo blue stuff. So that's what the Prismacolor Coley race looks like, if it even shows up on camera. It's very, very light. In fact, when you're sketching, I tend to keep a really light touch when I'm sketching. So, I mean, I can't even see that from where I'm sitting. 
So the light blue color actually is a much better option for sketching. And then on to the mechanical lead, which is the darkest of the bunch. Now, as far as erasability of these, the Pilot Neox erases, but it does have a tendency to stain the paper. But the Prismacolor Cold Erase erases very well. Um, I guess I'll show off the Prismacolor LEDs as well. So I'm just going to grab one of these real quick. This is the one I normally use. I normally use uh, blue pencils for my blue uh, lead. That way it's just a quick, easy identifier. But I had HB in here. So this is the Prismacolor Turquoise. It's a good shade, much better than the Cole Erase, and it's a, it stains more than in all the others do, but it still is erasable. What I typically use the non-photo blue for is two things. When I'm sketching on page layouts, I'll typically start with non-photo blue, and then I'll go back with darker lead, uh, any lead, to start building in the details. And the reason I do that is I light box everything. So I do it in steps. So I'll do a layout where I'll typically sketch everything in real quick. And then I'll light box that onto a new piece of paper where I tidy everything up and I get it pretty much fully complete. And then I'll transfer that to my board. I'll either scan it and print it non-photo blue or I'll pencil directly on the board by light boxing it. And so the reason I use the non-photo blue is when I'm doing that first step, my sketches, when I'm light boxing, this doesn't show up barely at all. And all that's left is the uh, more refined sketching that I've done with the actual graphite. So it's makes it a lot easier to discern what lines I wanna keep when I'm doing my light boxing without having to basically redraw everything. So then on to the regular pencils. We'll start at the hardest grade lead. Ironically, would be my only H and the Tombow, which is more like, because this is a more of a Japanese style lead, it's actually gonna be softer. It's gonna be closer to H, B, and B. Um, so like when I take my Dixon Ticonderoga, this is HB, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit harder lead. And then here's the HB on the Mitsubishi Uni. As you can see, it's darker as well, it's softer lead. The nice thing about the Unis is they hold their point really well. The, the lead is super dense. So then go into B. This is typically the pencil I use um, directly on the boards or I'll use 2B. So this is the Mitsubishi High Uni 2B. And you can see the points don't doll out super, super quick. And then the Tombow 2B. So those are the different grade LEDs that I, I use on my wooden pencils. Going into the lead holders, here is the Stedler. Let me point this up a little bit real quick. So I'm just gonna insert it into my lead pointer and twist. All right, here's a Stedler HB. I use the lead holders more for sketching. So this is 4H. Very hard lead, 2H. So just a little bit darker, very hard lead and then our 2B. So those are the uh, pencils that I use and the erasers. Uh, I'll kind of demo the erasers. The kneaded rubber eraser uh, works great for you can dab it on pencils to lighten them up or you can just softly lighten stuff up. The pencil eraser erases nicely. Sakura foam eraser erases nicely. And my all-time favorite, the Tombow Mono. Very soft eraser on the paper and picks up everything really, really well. And then 
going for my finer pony racers, the Stedler. You can see that smears more, even through this, the softer areas of the lead. Uh, let's go to my mono eraser, going through the same area of the lead. And you can see it doesn't smear as much. And then the other fine point erasers I have. Honestly, I use these more when I'm doing uh, stuff work in my sketchbook where I'm doing graphite drawings. That's one of the reasons I have so many different grades of lead is I do, to a certain extent, a lot of uh, more realistic stuff in my sketchbook as far as graphite goes, so a lot more shading. Uh, but I don't go to the extremes. I do have a 12B pencil for laying down something extremely dark, but I, I don't use it very often. So the Faber-Castell, I'll show you this eraser. This eraser tends to smear around the lead a lot more and leaves it behind on the page a lot more than say the mono does. So yeah, it produces less eraser dust, but all right. And then I guess one of the last items that I didn't include in here, it's more of an essential item uh, that falls into this category that I find essential is when you're doing a lot of erasing with a plastic eraser, especially on inked pages, Depending on how sweaty your hands are, or oily, uh, mine tend to be on the more oily side, uh, which is why I transfer so much ink from, like I get ink on my hands and then it transfers very easily back to the paper here. Same thing when I'm doing graphite work. Yeah, I pick up a lot of graphite. So if I was to wipe with my hand, I'd smudge the ink, especially because I tend to use a lot of non-waterproof ink. So one of these brushes is really, really helpful to dust away without actually running your hand across the page. So I highly recommend it. This is a Da Vinci uh, brush. It's like goat hair or horse hair or something like that. I think it's goat hair, but it's a very soft brush and it's great for uh, getting the eraser shavings off your page. But uh, basically that's the penciling supplies that I use. It's a lot of them. Um, typically what I use for the most part is I'll use like this, the regular Prismacolor cold erase, light blue, and then my Rotring for sketching uh, on comic pages when doing my layouts. And then I'll typically go back with my Uni HB, fill in the roughs, light box that over, and then I'll use the HB pencil to, to work on that. So, you know, one of the HB pencils. And then after I get that finalized, I transfer it to the board with a B or 2B pencil. And that's just so I can get that darker line uh, without the risk of indenting the paper. So it gives me a better idea of what my contrast is. Uh, another reason you use softer lead is, I'll demonstrate this with the 2B, is you can actually kind of feather the line with softer lead. So like it actually has sort of a taper to it. So you can indicate your rendering a lot, a lot better. than using a, a hard lead. And then when I go to erase that, where I was doing the scribbling, it doesn't gouge the paper. Now you're gonna get some staining of the graphite in the board, which happens. But that's why I use the, the 2B. Now if I was to use just like a HB, an HB pencil on that, you can see that it doesn't feather as much and the amount of pressure I need to get that kind of look is a lot greater. So it actually stained the board more uh, because there's like little indentations in there. So it doesn't erase as cleanly as the B and 2B. 
So now if I come in with my B, you can see that it erased a lot more cleanly than the HB did. So that's basically what I use for penciling. Um, I do use uh, for detail, I use my mechanical pencils, these two in particular. And then my lead holders, I tend to use more for sketching uh, and, and page layouts and stuff like that. So, but I'm partial to wooden pencils. Don't know why. That's just what I use. But anyway, um, and this is the lead holder. It's just regular generals pencil extender. I don't know if I really talked about that that much uh, other than talking about the caps. But uh, this is the particular pencil extender I use. The 0 0.3 is a very, 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 very fine line compared to the 0 0.5. But that just gives me a more consistent fine point than having to keep the pencil super, super sharp all the time. But with a good sharpener, that's not too much of an issue. And if it starts to blunt down, you can just roll it on the sandpaper real quick and, and sharpen it right back up. That's one of the benefits of having a long point. But anyway, guys and gals, hopefully that gives you a good idea of the different materials that I use for penciling, different erasers I use for penciling and sketching. And uh, hope you found it helpful. And uh, we'll see you again in one of the next parts. Uh, we'll definitely be going through my inking supplies. So my my dip pens will be a part uh fine liners and markers brush pens uh paper we'll be going through everything that i use throughout the this part of the series so again as always like the video if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it and leave a nice comment down below and what you'd like to see in the future and like and subscribe take care everyone